my name is Benjamin Lopez. I work at West Coast Inc. Studio here in Orange. And um, I've been tattooing for almost nine years now. Back in 99, I was young, I was in the streets. Uh, I didn't know I was gonna be tattooing. I was drawing, right? I was just sit sitting there drawing. And actually I had like a AK next to me and my friends had guns, All everybody had guns. And at that moment I was in a different lifestyle, you know? We were actually going to war with a different rival gang. Once one of my friends was passing by and he's like, what are you doing? And I'm like, no, I'm not doing nothing. And he's like, let me see what you're doing. And I was like, dude, go back over there, man. So he's like, show me. So I showed him. And he's like, uh, he's like, damn fool, I didn't know you know how to draw. I was like, well, fuck. I was like, we're over here like in Death Comp 4. So I'm not gonna like, hey, look guys, look what I'm doing. I'm over here drawing and shit. So I showed him and then he's like, hey, he's like, why don't you go ask the, the homegirl Rita for a tattoo machine? She had one at the time. She's a longtime friend that, you know, she's an old gang member or whatever you want to call it. As soon as I asked her, I was like, Rita, you don't mind if I use a machine? And she's like, you know what? I don't fucking need it. Go ahead. Yeah, take it. I ended up tattooing her like five, four years ago. I ended up, and when I saw her like four or five years ago, this is the first thing she told me. She was like, out of all the bullshit we've done, she's like, I'm glad that I ended up giving you that machine because that took you away from a lot of things. I never thought that I would be tattooing. I mean, I've always loved drawing. It's just, that was random. I, I love doing realism, so. then then uh, portraits is another, it's a plus because those are meaningful, you know? So when people ask for portraits, it's like, I'm listening to a part of what they believe in and what they love. And, and me doing something that for them, it's like, it's a very powerful thing. Like, you know, especially putting it on your body, it means a lot. Yeah, and for them to trust me to do it, it's even more. Well, when I started tattooing, as we had no, you know, freelancing, um, I uh, I looked up to to Jose Lopez. He's a black and gray artist, you know, realistic, and he does amazing portraits, you know. And he's in a wheelchair, just like me. What, what separates me from other tattoo artists is uh, I'm very ambitious and I love what I do and I keep pushing it. And every time I, I do do a tattoo, I I think it's not what I expect it to be, even though, like, I, I do my best, but you know, the customers love it, but just in me, like, I feel that I could do better, and and that was that's what pushes me every day, like, it, it pushes me every day to do more and more, and and thanks to this, like, and the art that I love doing is, I feel like I've never worked a day in my life, and I don't think I really will, and the day that I do feel like this is a job, then I'll just quit and do something else. And every time I tattoo, I do it with a smile. So I think that separates me from everybody. <laughs> I could feel people staring at me. And yet when they don't, they don't know me, like you say, they criticize you and they, 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 they judge you without even knowing who you are. And once people do talk to you, they notice that you're a different person than what you really become, you know, or what, you, what they think you are. And yeah, not everybody that has tattoos is a bad person, but some are. <laughs> Just like in general, you could have no tattoos and you could be that person. So it doesn't matter. I don't judge anybody. You know what led me to this tattoo career? Prison. Prison led me to this tattoo career. I ended up making a machine in there. I made my own ink. I started tattooing and uh, I was known as one of the best guys in the yard to be tattooing. So I was like, if I can do this, why don't I do it when I go out, when I get it released? So when I got released, um, I ended up buying my own tattoo machine, my first tattoo machine. And I was like, you know what, let me, let me start doing this. And it started keeping me away from the life that would have fucked me up. My mom, she would see me tattoo people. She would see me tattoo my homeboys and she would come and she'd be like, oh, you guys ain't got fucking shit to do. Look at you, why are you getting shit on your head? Look, why are you getting shit on your neck? And it's funny, now she loves it. So everything that I do, she looks at it and she's like, oh, mijo, that's nice. And for her to be like that, it's like one of the best things in life. It's very, it's very, very bien él. Y me da mucho gusto que él vaya cada día mejor. Porque antes no estaba mejor, pero ahora sí está bien. Y le doy gracias a, a mi Dios que él cada día está más mejor. I love him. <laughs> the 
that day actually that my accident happened, I was gonna get initiated in the gang. My sister, she wanted to go to a, to go see Friday, the movie, the first Friday, which was in 1995. I, I didn't wanna go, I, I kept on arguing with her and then finally I was like, all right, fuck it, let's go. So we went with my friends and when we met with them, we were getting high, we were smoking weed before we went to the, uh, to the movie. We started driving and as soon as, like not even three minutes later, we hit a right turn and there was a truck and when we got in front of it, like they got pissed off, so they started flipping us off. So first thing we did, and we were already like young and troublemakers, right? So we um, we started flipping them back off. And they just took out a gun and they started shooting at us. We tried to get away. We took a couple red lights and we kept on taking red lights and they're still shooting at us. I remember the last red light. My brother-in-law was like, what should we do? What should we do? Should we take it, Benny? What do you think? What do you think? I was like, take it, take it, take it. So as soon as he took it, I remember the dip, there was a, a, a ditch or something, but we hit it and as soon as I heard the car go Voof, like in the air. So I look up, but all the windows are shot out. And luckily, I don't, I'm surprised I didn't get shot, right? So when I turned, I saw a car coming from the side and it cheap on those, bah, it hit us and the car flipped over. I don't know how many times it flipped, but I don't remember shit. And all I remember was being next to a, a fire hydrant, but my, I broke my back on the fire hydrant and I woke up and the water was, uh, I was drowning on the water. It was crazy. Ah, just remembering gives me like, yeah. I was 14. It's 23 years today. Oh, mama. <laughs> Come on, now you gotta walk. Okay. Yeah, don't get stuck, man. What if my accident would have never happened? Um, I always wonder that, but I, I, I'm glad, I'm, I'm glad where I'm at and I appreciate everything that I've learned and it's crazy. It's crazy, you know? it's crazy that I'm even talking to you guys right now about all this. Yeah. But that's, that's just me, that I, the things that I've learned, the lessons that I've had in my life and, and I appreciate everything so I'm not afraid to talk about what I've done because that wasn't me, that's not me anymore. Which is the most painful tattoo you've ever had? Like most painful part of your body? You guys really want to know that? Yeah. Ah, yeah. No. <laughs> <Very curious. laughs> ah it's not this head. <laughs>